Well, hello, I'm Josh, and I'm back once again with another classic movie to tell you about. A silent movie, in fact, and one you've most likely heard of. I'm talking about Fritz Lang's 1927 science fiction classic, Metropolis. Metropolis follows Freighter, whose father is the master of Metropolis. A freighter spends his days having fun in the vast gardens and arenas that his father rules over. But after stumbling upon a factory in the lower levels, he sees the poor living and working conditions, and he realizes just how different his life is from the rest of the city. All the while you have a lovesick mad scientist, an evil robot set on the destruction of the city, along with a prophet who sees changes coming to Metropolis of epic proportions. So as I said, this film is directed by Fritz Lang, and though I don't remember him ever coming up on this channel before, he is a huge name in film history. His career in Germany alone was enough to put him up there with some of the greats like F.W. Murnau and G.W. Pabst. But later he ended up coming to America after a certain party kind of took over his country, and he then became almost a bigger director here. In fact, he was so prolific, it takes quite a while just to list off his greatest films. But a few of his most famous includes films like M, Spies, Dr. Mabuse, Scarlet Street, Fury, and The Big Heat. But what is probably his most recognizable achievement is Metropolis. Similarly to Nosferatu, which I talked about a few months ago, Metropolis is one of those silent films that has managed to cross the hurdle that a lot of other silent films are trapped by and maintain a pretty high level of pop culture notoriety for close to 100 years. Now that is not to say that you'll see a lot of kids flocking to the theaters to see Metropolis, and outside of the film sharing its title with Superman's favorite city, I doubt a lot of people are probably going to know the film by name, but regardless you can find many blatant references to this film all over the place. From Queen music videos to big sci-fi blockbusters like Blade Runner and Star Wars. And when watching this film, it's pretty easy to see why that is. I mean, this film really feels epic. From the hordes of extras who fill the screens to the massively extensive miniature cityscape, with though scaled down immensely from real life, was far from what you normally think of as miniature. And all sorts of special effects and incredible production design fill the screen throughout the film. The city has a large mix of architectural styles, with combinations of gothic and art deco being some of the most prominent. You can easily see it has some great influence on the Gotham City as shown in Tim Burton's Batman, and Lang actually said that he initially got the idea for the film from visiting New York City and seeing the Manhattan skyline. And along with the visuals, the film also maintains its relevance through the story and themes. Though set in the future, much like Soylent Green, which I talked about last month, the film is very much talking about the present. It shows social class struggles, with the wealthy and fancy decorated apartments on the tops of skyscrapers, while the lower working class are literally cogs in the machine, manually turning the gears to power the whole city. And when we see one of those cogs fall behind, it has catastrophic effects. It evokes back to these images from the Industrial Revolution, with the big factories and their billowing smoke. And today, it can kind of be compared to the big Amazon warehouses, and the shots in the film of everyone riding and getting off the elevators are quite evocative of the images you see of coal miners going back into the mines. And scattered throughout, the film also has a great number of biblical themes and references as well, with heavy references to the Garden of Eden and the Tower of Babel. And another part of the film actually deals with the construction of a robot, and these moments take place in this very creepy kind of German expressionist looking house in the middle of the city. And there you can see a mad scientist in his lab, which very clearly kind of resembles the one in James Whale's Frankenstein that would come a few years later. And there he is working on this creation that, as you can see, also clearly inspired the look of C-3PO. Now an interesting fact, back in the 1980s, the music producer and composer Giorgio Moroder actually re-released the film with portions colorized and a more modern score from artists like Pat Benatar and Freddie Mercury. And it's a pretty interesting way to watch the film. 
although maybe not the best way to see it for the first time. Also keep in mind when I said they modernized the score, they of course modernized it for the 1980s. And between the scores for films like Top Gun, Flashdance, and Scarface, Marauder was probably one of the most stereotypically 80s composers out there. So like I said, it's a pretty fun experience for sure, but maybe just not the definitive one. And for a time, though this film was never completely lost, it was missing several scenes. Apparently, close to 25 minutes or so of the film were cut following its premiere. This was because, among other reasons, distributors thought the film was just too long, and this cut footage was eventually destroyed. And these cut scenes were thought to have been lost, with most releases seeking to tell the whole story having to fill these gaps with text to explain what happened. That is, until as recently as 2008, when a complete uncut version of the film was discovered in Argentina that apparently had been ordered and shipped before the film had come out, and so it was never recut like the others. And the owner apparently had it around this whole time, not realizing what kind of a treasure he had in front of him. So now these scenes have all been added back into the film, and we can watch Metropolis in its entirety. And you are likely noticing these scenes are a bit grainier, and the picture is smaller than the rest of the film. And that is because, though the collector had the film, in around the 60s or 70s he was actually told he should have the film copied over, as these kinds of old films use nitrate which is very flammable if not kept in the right conditions. And seeing that he was keeping it in his house, copying the film was really his only option. And so he had it copied over to a 16mm print, which though was not horrible, is much grainier in a massive fidelity loss from the original nitrate, which the rest of the film was restored from. Though as I said, these lost scenes have only been present in his version. And seeing as the film was copied in the 1960s, there was clearly not as much thought put into trying to restore the aged film before copying it. And so the scratchy image, which normally could get cleaned up and restored pretty well, was copied dirt and all baked into the film. And so as you can see, despite the massive restoration project that this film has become, these missing scenes are quite obviously a visual downgrade from the rest of the film. But being that we are even able to watch this 95 years later, you kind of have to just appreciate that we can watch this film in its entirety at all. And so if you'd like to watch Metropolis, it's available pretty much everywhere. Though I would check the runtime if you want to watch these extra scenes added in. Usually this version will be referred to as the complete Metropolis, and you can rent or buy it from all the usual streaming sites. And from what I've seen, it's been uploaded all over the place, many times in pretty high quality versions. Though you might have a bit harder time tracking down the Giorgio Moroder version that I was talking about earlier. From what I gathered, since there are so many big names that attached to that version, it's come through a lot of licensing issues. So if you want to see that version, I'd say just keep an eye out for it. And physically, there are a number of great Blu-ray and DVD versions out there if you want to see it that way. The version I have is from Keener Lorber, and it is, as you can see, the complete uh, Metropolis. And it's a really solid version. I mean, the film looks great, it's got these lost scenes added back in, and it's got tons of bonus features as well. Alright, so now for the comment question, and I'm wondering, what is your favorite special effects film? As I said, this film is a landmark in special effects. Long before it was normal to have massive futuristic cities, robots, and flying cars in your sci-fi movie. But there have been many fantastic uses of special effects on large and small scales since then. So I'm wondering, what is your favorite? Be sure to put them in the comment section down below and start discussing. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe if you want to see some more of these. Remember to keep watching movies, and I'll see you again soon.